Hey guys, what's up? This is Edgemeister, and today we're here with another live commentary. Now, I'm going to do a strike this time, because I want to actually talk about something else. And when I'm doing PvP, uh, I kind of want to like focus on the PvP game, and I'll talk about that instead. So, yeah, I'm just going to do a strike this time. Um, I don't know if you just joined in progress. It is Void Burn, so I'm going to be using uh, Night Stalker. I'm also going to be using Infinite Paths 8. And I'm alive just for the fun of it. And then I'm using Crimson because I need to complete the Catalyst. I'm only 15% down the Catalyst, so I have to complete that. The only Catalyst I've actually ever completed is the Tractor Cannon, so <laughs> yeah. But anyways, wow, that was a fast load time in there. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about Forsaken. So it was revealed yesterday. There's going to be more tomorrow, so I might do... Emphasis on might. I don't want to promise anything. I might do a better in-depth video on it after tomorrow. But uh, yeah, for now, we're just going to play the strike and talk about my impressions of it right now. So, first of all, I am very excited. I'd say they're pretty positive. The only negative I actually have to say is the pricing. Uh, it's not a problem with for me, but it kind of makes me worried about like how many people are actually gonna play this, play this expansion because I want to play with as many people as I want as I can. But if you want to get the expansion and the annual pass, which is the new version of the seasons pass, uh, where the DLCs are different than the DLCs we've had in the past, are there's no gonna be no major story content. Uh, there's probably going to be more along the lines of like the April updates and kind of what we had in year two and three in Destiny 1 where yeah you maybe have some story but like it's not a cinematic story with a bunch of CGI cutscenes and stuff. All the resources are going to be poured into the end game so I'm actually going to be a little bit more excited for that than uh, if it was like Curse of Osiris or War Mine to be honest because all they've done is ruin characters. The only character that they've had they didn't ruin and uh the holy shit the destiny 2 dlcs is um rasputin every other character has been fucked up uh osiris is like i don't know what the fuck's wrong with osiris like why did they have to screw up osiris hey i'm playing with airwolf again i played it with them in the last strike i did um yeah they screwed up osiris anna bray Nocris, fucking zol like, Zol, the boss fight, was probably the best strike boss fight we've ever had in Destiny. But, Jesus Christ. A strike boss for a worm god? No. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's... So, I'm, I'm going to be excited that they're not going to be ruining any more characters. And, uh, hopefully... It seems like the only major characters that are going to be in this expansion are going to be the Reef characters and Cade. Which are already established. They're NPCs. They're not going to ruin them. Uh, they all kind of have a, have personality, uh, up until Taken King, Varix and Petrovenge had probably the most character out of all the actual characters. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to see that. But anyways, uh, I, forgot what I, was, I forgot what I was originally talking about. So, there's going to be three of those expansions. So that's better than what we had in year two and year three, where we only had one of those kind of expansions a year. And you can't buy them individually. You have to either buy the annual pass or you don't get them at all. So uh, I'm pretty sure that'll be available to you at any point. And they're probably just going to add strikes, missions, guns. Uh, that's what I'm assuming. Uh, but yeah, they say they're adding in new endgame activities. So it looks like raid layers is with the new raid location which is the dreaming city the home world of the awoken did i mention that the dlc takes place in the reef the, the, the dlc takes place in the reef okay guys so uh yeah the dlc takes place in the reef um there's gonna be two new locations one of them is going to be uh a patrol space the other one is going to be an end game location they say tr similar to the dreadnought so it might be a patrol space uh, but it might just be a, a place with a, where a bunch of endgame activities take place. Either way, it's awesome. So they have, I forget what it's called. It's like the, the something shores, shattered shores, floating shores, something like that. 
I'm really bad with names. I watched the vidoc like five times in the, in the uh, live stream once, so I should know, but I'm really bad with names, so I apologize. But um, yeah, that that's really cool. They have. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be happy with both environments either way. It looks like I think it's a fractured chores. I think the fractured chores. They're probably going to be around Nessus European Dead Zone size, otherwise people are going to complain. And it looks like they have a lot of creator freedom with that. It's going to be probably one of the most unique locations, because every location we've had has been on a planet, but not these two. These two locations are brand new. No, no planet, they're just a bunch of asteroids stuck together for the uh, Fractured Shores. And then we have the Dreaming City, which is the homeworld of the Reefborn Awoken, which is awesome, because they've been kind of surrounded by mystery for the longest time. Even when we went to the Reef in Destiny 1, we never really could control it. We did the Prison of Elders activity, and we went to the Vestian Outpost, and then we had the Drifter PvP map, and that's kind of all we've had in terms of the Reef in Destiny 1, so... This is really exciting to actually get to explore it more. One of the things I noticed, like, first thing is, like, they mentioned nothing about the Reef in the Destiny 2 campaign. And I was like, why have they just retconned out, whoops, the Reef? Why have they retconned out, um, Eris Morn? Like, until this latest expansion, if you didn't play Destiny 1 on the account that you're playing Destiny 2 on, they don't even mention Eris Morn. Yeah, they mention they do mention her if you've played Destiny 1 on that account before, but one thing I noticed when playing on the PC version, where obviously I didn't play Destiny 1 on PC since it didn't exist, uh, I got the all the dialogue from the people who didn't uh, didn't have the first game. And I noticed like Eris Morn, Rasputin, none of those characters were mentioned. And I mean, why? They could have been mentioned to set up DLCs. Instead of explaining what the fuck Rasputin is in War Man, they could have just been like, Yeah, Rasputin, you know, that character that you knew about. And I mean, he was a big part of Destiny 1. Same with Eris Morn. Huge part of Taken King Eris Morn was. And, um, yeah, they just, they're not in the game. But, uh, yeah, now we're finally getting into the Reef. Like, when they mentioned Prince Aldrin and his ship in War Man exp Expansion, I'm like, Yes! <laughs> we can confirm that Destiny 1 is canon. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. But uh, yeah, so we're actually going to the Reef. We get to see the home world, home world of the Awoken. We might even get to see some sort of origin of the Awoken, which would be amazing. Because uh, as far as we know, the Awoken were born in the Reef. And they have a queen who is confirmed to be alive but it's still kind of sketchy uh, the details behind it so yeah so the queen is confirmed to be alive guys just you know uh, but yeah we're gonna be <laughs> probably hearing a lot more stuff about it it'd be cool if it's kind of like a reveal at the end like you didn't see the queen until the very end and it's like oh it's the queen um, but yeah I, I cannot wait for this DLC its story looks awesome um, all these activities, all the changes they've made, it looks awesome. But, uh, yeah, Dreaming City, the Fractured Shores, awesome. Uh, I need to kind of start speeding up this commentary because I'm going very slow. Let's talk about the story. So, within the story of Destiny 2, some adventures, whatever, I forget where I heard it. But why, why do I get off my story? I need to stay on this. Uh, it has been mentioned that Cade 6 has been putting enemies and stuff in the Prison of Elders, which is, again, I thought it was just like a nice kind of nod, but it turns out that is a major plot point for this Forsaken DLC, because, for all, <laughs> bad news for everyone wanting uh, Prison of Elders as an activity to return, everyone's escaped to the Prison of Elders, <laughs> so it'd be kind of hard to do that activity with, you know, a giant prison break. Yeah, you could have ads and some things, but uh, for the most part, there's no more enemies in the Prison of Elders. All the major ones have been gone, and that is the point of the campaign. Probably a lot of strikes, which is awesome, and um, hopefully the raid as well. 
what I'm hoping the story is like is maybe you go hunt maybe one or two of them throughout the story and they've, they've been turning lots of story missions into strikes which a lot of people don't like but honestly once you beat the story it's nice to just have a mission you can keep returning to it's a better return on their their uh, efforts because instead of making a story mission that you will only replay with uh, meditations they've created a story mission now that you can replay every time you go into a strike playlist so that is awesome I'm not going to complain about that uh, and they could do that they could have a lot of hunts be story missions uh, the only downside is once you beat the story all of a sudden now there's nothing really left story wise whereas like in Taken King you beat the story, you beat Oryx's physical form, then he did strikes and stuff to prevent anyone else from stepping up, then he, then he did the raid to make sure Oryx stayed dead. And I think that's kind of like what they should have done. I'm going over uh, My Name is Bife's kind of story uh, wish list thing that he put out of what he wants a good story to be. I 100% agree with him. The story should continue after the campaign is finished. So I'm hoping we maybe kill one or two of the Barons. And they say like it's called Baron Hunt. I don't know if that's gonna be the name of this campaign, just like the Red War is the name of the vanilla campaign. Uh, but I hope it's like some sort of like post campaign, post game story, where you beat maybe you beat the main Baron, and oh shit, and then now you go into Baron Hunt, where there's a bunch of strikes and quests where you go and hunt the re rest of the Barons down, and maybe the raid is because it takes place within the dreaming city the home world of the awoken which is really weird because they're the awoken aren't our enemies so maybe there's some sort of traitor that held himself up in uh the fortress wherever the raid actually takes place in the reef and then it's our job to go and hunt down the traitor that released all the criminals i think that'd be really cool it would be a good way to wrap up the story where it's like don't fucking do this again. <laughs> Wait for it. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of my hopes for the story. But also, I'm, I shouldn't have used it. I'll get it back for the next thing. Uh, when, also, when it comes to the story, I'm just going to unload on this guy. Oh, he's immune now. Fuck. Actually, no. I'm done, for, I'm done talking story here. Let's talk about the weapon slot changes now. Because those look amazing. So if you didn't know, Destiny 1's weapon slots are different than Destiny 2's. Because I know a lot of people, they actually have played Destiny 2 but not Destiny 1. In Destiny 1, you had your primary, your special, and your heavy. So your primary weapons are your kinetic and energies in Destiny 2. So your hand cannons, pulse rifles, scout rifles, all that kind of jazz. And then your special weapons are sniper rifles, fusion rifles and shotguns as well as sidearms once those came out and then your heavies was rocket launchers machine guns which don't make a return however they have said that they heard our enthusiasm when in the vidoc they said machine guns but what they actually meant was auto rifles and they said that they heard our enthusiasm toward that so that means possibly we're gonna be getting machine guns back at some point probably not within this expansion but I wouldn't put it behind us that maybe in the next expansion we could be getting machine guns back, the next major one, uh, which will take place in the Dreadnought because of that end cut scene in the vanilla story. But uh, yeah, it's much different from Destiny 2. And you can do that system if you want. And you can do Destiny 2 system because you can put any weapon type in any slot. Oh, shit. Um. I did not mean to do that. And we've wiped. Nice. Oh, wait, we killed the boss? Um. Nice! I guess I'll just respawn. That was weird. But. Yeah, and if you want, you can do like. Three. Uh, shotguns they showed off. You can put any weapon in any slot. So you can go three SMGs, three shotguns. You can go fusion rifle, sniper rifle, shotgun, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a good fusion rifle, I'm gonna use fucking 
tractor cannon as a shotgun, get a nice snappy sniper rifle, and that's going to be all really fun. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to go to the tower and keep talking to you guys. Because the next thing is randomized rolls. <laughs> they are coming back. Which is awesome. So, you're going to have 100% random rolls on all your guns. Just like in D1. But it looks like it's the D2 system where you only have one perk. Like, what I mean is, if I look at the... Uh, plot is correct or whatever whereas in d1 you'd have three scopes three middle tree columns and two traits you only have two scopes two middle tree columns and one trait so you have like half of what you had in d1 uh, what i hope it's going to be is random rolls how they are right now but the mod systems are going to be different to a point where um you can add another trait that, like if i you do this i could say Okay, this rolled with dynamic sway reduction. And I think they should do, again, three scopes and three middle tree perks again. Just because of the RNG-ness, you have a higher chance of getting the perks that you want. Whereas you won't, if you only have two, it's going to be really rough RNG. But, um, yeah, so you have three and three, one random trait, and then maybe another trait might be a mod. So instead of just, like, kinetic mods, I can put, like... Uh, oh, I want this thing to be super stable, so I'm going to put a Zen Moment mod on this guy and get this in Zen Moment. Or if you rolled a Zen Moment, you could put another Zen Moment on and get like a crazy stacking Zen Moment. And maybe uh, they might avoid that and be like, you cannot put two of the same on. And like when you're going to apply the mod, it might say, no, you can't. But uh, that is my hopes for randomized rolls, where they bring back the RNG grind but they're not like brutal RNG and you're also going to be grinding for mods just as much as you're grinding for guns. I think that would be the best system um, and I'm really excited to see what's going on. Uh, a lot of people who went to the Bungie Community Summit probably know what's going on with it but they cannot say it and I would hate to be in that position because I'd, I'd want to tell people like hey this is going to be fun but uh, yeah I can't right now. Also nine new supers <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so yeah, anyways, as this wraps up, I'm going to go over the one downside that I hinted at at the beginning of the video, which is the price point, and that is because it is going to be a $40 DLC, which isn't the bad thing. $40 DLCs aren't bad. The problem is the season's past. So yeah, it's probably going to give you good content. If you're a Destiny fan like me, You've probably already pre-ordered it. I didn't pre-order it yet, but I'm going to after I finish this commentary, most likely. Um, I, I, I just like nice things, so that's what I'm going to do. Anyways, uh, it's $70 if you want to get the expansion plus the annual pass. So for some people, that's like, you're making me pay $70 for... A game that I should have got at launch and I mean business wise they worked on this obviously they should you know be able to do this they work hard they should get paid for it simple as that but it still kind of hurts like again I'm gonna pay for it I'm not going to complain it's just the way things are, but it's, it's going to suck for some people. Anyways, that's going to pretty much do it. I'm just going to hand some things in. 29 out of 50. That, that is nice. Um, let's hand in some dead orbit. And um, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, we'll be hearing more stuff about the annual pass tomorrow at This Week at Bungie. We're going to be learning a, maybe a few more things. Maybe they'll answer a few questions. But, um, yeah, just going to have to about do it. Not nah, bad chill. Getting dismantled. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for I will see you guys in the next one. What are your thoughts on the DLC? I honestly think it's going to be like a Taken King level DLC where it's going to fix the game. Except for, it, like, people have been getting mad because we've just been striving to get back to where we were in D1. But with some of the things they're adding in, like, 
the new weapon slot changes plus with the new if the mod in random roll system is what I expect we're going to get something better than destiny one and that is pretty exciting so um, I can only hope but I will see you guys in the next one tell me what you guys think down in the description and I'll see you later bye